Hi guys, I'm Claire. Welcome back. So we are already a week into September, which seems like a good time for an August reading wrap up. So I thought what I would do this month is split it up into my fiction and poetry reading and my nonfiction reading because I read four of each categories this month and I'm a little bit worried about my tendency towards long-windedness. So let's get started with the fiction and poetry. I'm gonna go through these in the order that I read them. First up is Milk and Honey by Ruby Kaur. So as you might already know this is a really popular best-selling collection of poetry. I read it. I did not like it. <laughs> I did a full review explaining why I didn't like it um, which you can check out. I'm gonna link that um, above and below. Next up is another short book and that is Girl Meets Boy by Ali Smith. So I mentioned this book in my August book haul. This book was published in 2007. Um, it's a retelling of Ovid's Myth of Iphis. It follows two sisters, one of whom is rather straight-laced and climbing the corporate ladder at a bottled water company, and the other sister is more of a rebel and she meets and falls in love with a local activist graffiti artist. The book is told from both of their perspectives in a stream of consciousness style and it touches on topics that include sexuality, gender, identity, capitalism. And although that all sounds quite interesting, this wasn't my favorite book. And surprisingly, it wasn't because of the writing style. I actually found that I really enjoyed the style and I thought it was quite effective and moving at certain points. Allie Smith clearly is a master of language and her words have a lot of wonderful rhythm and movement to them. I was glad that I read this because it kind of showed me that I don't hate stream of consciousness. And I can certainly see why her work is so lauded and so loved by so many people. My issue then with it was that I think just because it is so short, I found it very insubstantial and I found the whole story in general to be rather forgettable. And you know, it was written in 2007, but I found that it felt quite dated even just 10 years later, especially the way that it sort of satirizes corporate culture. I didn't find that very original and I thought that it's disdain for technology felt very like 2007 and also one of the sister's reactions to her sister being gay felt like a caricature to me. And yeah, in general this book didn't feel substantial or long enough for me to really bond with any of the characters and it didn't really have like the kick that like a really good novella or short story needs to kind of like stick in my brain. I don't know if I'm gonna give Allie Smith another try. I was a little bit disappointed, but not in the ways that I expected to be, so I don't know. So the next book I read was by far my favorite read of the month, and that is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. I mentioned this in my August book haul, and I feel a little bit bad that I was so blase about it at the time. I am here to say that the hype is real um, and I just really really loved this book. This book is split fairly equally right down the middle between Ellis and Michael who are two men who grew up together in the 60s and 70s in Oxford and the first half of the book follows Ellis in 1996 and the second half of the book follows Michael in 1989. This is a book that is drenched in longing and Sunflower Yellow. It's a book that's completely about memory and how important past moments are. I think that this book really exemplifies the way that we are all a culmination of the past and of our memories and that memory isn't sort of moving backwards into a space but rather that memory is soaked into everything and surrounds us all the time. I think that oftentimes in books, people who are stuck in the past or, or who are captive to memory are sad figures or figures that kind of can't move forward. And what I love about this book is that it really is an ode to memory and to those small moments that maybe don't build up to some sort of culmination or happy ending, but that mattered. Sometimes in hugely important but quiet and buried ways. And it just, ugh, I highly recommend Tin Man. It's just beautiful. 
And the last thing I read this month was The Captain's Verses by Pablo Neruda. The only thing I had read by Neruda before this was um, his much quoted line, love is short, forgetting is so long, which is like, ugh. So this collection was published in 1952 and it was originally published anonymously. I think it was about 10 years or so before it was published with Neruda's name on it. It covers a lot of the territory of being in love and falling in love. So there is the um, devotion and the love and the desire, but there's also a lot of fury and um, a little bit of jealousy and um, some of the ache of love also. Initially I wasn't blown away by this book because I think it opens up with these sort of lovey-dovey poems. After a couple of them you're kind of like, okay I get it. As you go on he gets more into the fury and you know the pain of love and he also weaves in some stuff about political revolution. He describes his lover as being not only his lover but also his comrade in arms. He weaves in a lot of references to agriculture and plants and he often describes his lover as being a tiny grain of wheat and it makes me want to look up more about him so that I can understand more fully his references and what his background is and why he's kind of weaving this imagery into his poetry. Most of these poems are quite short. They're maybe like a page and a half long and towards the end there are three longer poems that are five or six pages long each and that's what made me want to read more of his poetry because those longer poems just have a momentum and a rhythm to them and imagery that is so radiant. There are instances of slightly toxic masculinity where he's kind of talking about wanting to like possess her and you know he loves her because she's beautiful um, but also she like washes his socks. <laughs> so I was like oh great. So I mean he is like a man of his time I guess and there is certainly some strong male ego in here. Um, that rubbed me the wrong way in a couple of poems, but in general, um, I appreciated um, a lot of them as well. So that is all the fiction and poetry that I read in the month of August. I will be back at you tomorrow with my non-fiction August wrap-up, so I'll see you then. Thanks guys!